Fear is going to be a player in your life, but you get to decide how much. You can spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here and the decisions we make in this moment, which are based in either love or fear. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm saying I'm the proof that you can ask the universe for it. You have not cause you ask not. It's that simple. Most people don't have the life of their dreams cause you ain't never asked God could you have it. You've been trying to do it yourself. You've been trying to figure it out for yourself. How that's been working out for you. Can't figure it out. Ain't no scripture nowhere tell you to figure it out. What you trying to figure your life out for? It ain't yours. You ain't make it. You ain't the creator. You can't change the past. So what you tripping with your life for? Most people ain't rich today because you ain't never asked God could you be rich. I asked God every day when I was homeless. At the lowest point of my life, I ask God every day, could I be rich? Ask. If there's one art in life to learn extremely well, that's got to be one of them. The art of asking. What do you want? If you would only ask, well, Steve, what do I ask for? Everything. You got to start asking God for big stuff. Stop wasting God's time with all this little stuff. Lord, help me make my rent. Don't he always? Lord, help me make my rent. You keep coming up with it. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe you should ask God for a mortgage? You don't think God got mortgage money? But you know why you don't ask God for the mortgage? Because you keep getting in the way. But you say, well, I don't have a job that dictates I would afford a mortgage. I don't make enough money. I got bad credit. You think God don't know that? He said, ask. You think God don't know you need a better job? You block your own blessing because you get in the way of the answer. God don't need you in the way, man. Who you think you talking to? Ain't this the same God that made heaven and earth in six days? God do big stuff. Ask God for something big. This can do it. Asking starts a unique process, mental and emotional. I don't even know how it works. All I know is it works. There's a lot of things you don't need to know how. Just work them. Define what you want and describe what you want. Goals become like a magnet. They pull you that direction. And the better you describe them, the more they pull. My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that that was possible for him. And so he made a conservative choice. Instead, he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job. And our family had to do whatever we could to survive. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. You know, I watched the effect of my father's love and humor and how it altered the world around me. And I thought, that's something to do. That's something worth my time. It wasn't long before I started acting up. You know, people would come over to the house and they'd be greeted by a seven-year-old throwing himself down a large flight of stairs. My father used to brag that I wasn't a ham, I was the whole pig. And he treated my talent as if it was his second chance. When I was about 28, after a decade as a professional comedian, I realized one night in LA that the purpose of my life had always been to free people from concern, just like my dad. And when I realized this, I dubbed my new devotion the Church of Freedom from Concern. What's yours? How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? 
that's all you have to figure out. As someone who's done what you're about to go and do, I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Everything you gain in life will rot and fall apart, and all that will be left of you is what was in your heart. The only one I hadn't freed was myself, and that's when my search for identity deepened. I wondered who I'd be without my fame. Who would I be if I said things that people didn't want to hear? Or if I defied their expectations of me? And that peace, that peace that we're after, lies somewhere beyond personality, beyond the perception of others, beyond invention and disguise, even beyond effort itself. You can join the game, fight the wars, play with form all you want, but to find real peace, you have to let the armor go. Your need for acceptance can make you invisible in this world. Don't let anything stand in the way of the light that shines through this form. Risk being seen in all of your glory. We are not the avatars we create. We are not the pictures on the film stock. We are the light that shines through. All else is just smoke and mirrors, distracting, but not truly compelling. I've often said that I wished people could realize all their dreams and wealth and fame and so that they could see that it's not where you're going to find your sense of completion. Like many of you, I was concerned about going out into the world and doing something bigger than myself until someone smarter than myself made me realize that there is nothing bigger than myself. My soul is not contained within the limits of my body. My body is contained within the limitlessness of my soul. One unified field of nothing, dancing for no particular reason, except maybe to comfort and entertain itself. Now I'm always at the beginning. I have a reset button and I ride that button constantly. Once that button is functioning in your life, there's no story that the mind could create that will be as compelling. The imagination is always manufacturing scenarios, both good and bad, and the ego tries to keep you trapped in the multiplex of the mind. Our eyes are not viewers, they are also projectors that are running a second story over the picture that we see in front of us all the time. Fear is writing that script, and the working title is, I'll Never Be Enough. No matter what you gain, ego will not let you rest. It will tell you that you cannot stop until you've left an indelible mark on the earth, until you've achieved immortality. How tricky is this ego that it would tempt us with the promise of something we already possess? I just want you to relax. Relax and dream up a good life. I had a substitute teacher from Ireland in the second grade that told my class during morning prayer that when she wants something, anything at all, she prays for it and promises something in return and, and she always gets what she wants. I'm sitting at the back of the classroom thinking, my family can't afford a bike. So I went home and I prayed for one. And I promised I would recite the rosary every night in exchange. But two weeks later, I got home from school to find a brand new Mustang bike with a banana seat and easy rider handlebars. From fool to cool. My family informed me that I had won the bike in a raffle that a friend of mine had entered my name in without, any, without my knowledge whatsoever. So that type of thing has been happening to me ever since. As far as I can tell, it's just about letting the universe know what you want and working toward it while letting go of how it comes to pass. Your job is not to figure out how it's gonna happen for you, but to open the door in your head. And when the door opens in real life, just walk through it. And when I say life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you, I really don't know if that's true. I'm just making a conscious choice to perceive challenges as something beneficial so that I can deal with them in the most productive way. Oh, and uh, why not take a chance on faith as well? Not hope, but faith. I don't believe in hope. Hope is a beggar. Hope walks through the fire and faith leaps over it. See, the thing about having faith is you don't need nobody's permission. You don't have to take out a loan. You don't have to get accepted into the course. You can start your faith today. You can start your walk with God today. 
He's available. All you got to do is go. Thank you.